we have seen how you can find a projection matrix in two ways. You can either write it as a sum of matrices or as a single product. Both ways have nice advantages, as you will learn in this video, where we will discuss some properties of the projection matrix. So, first of all, if you have your W as a span of U1 up to UN, you have to make sure you have an orthonormal basis. So, if you don't have it, use Gram's mean first and normalize then. So, uh, until you have an orthonormal basis. And then we have learned how you can find your projection matrix. You use your U1 up to UN as follows. Either you compute U1 times U1 transpose and U2 times U2 transpose and so on and so on uh, and add them up as a sum of n matrices. It's one way to find your projection matrix. Or second way, form your matrix U and compute U times U transpose. Well, second way, it looks easier of course, but let's look at an interesting property of the first way first. So what's going on here? Well, uh, let's do it with only U1 and U2 in order to make the figure a bit easier. Uh, then we can write our Y as a linear combination of U1 and U2. Then uh, we can, uh, that means that the Y is a combination of C1 U1 over here and C2 U2 over here, where the C1 U1 is the orthogonal projection of Y on U1 and C2 times U2 is the orthogonal projection of Y onto U2. Okay. Now, we have only U1 and U2, so our P becomes P1 plus P2, where P1 is U1 times U1 transpose and P2 is U2 times U2 transpose. Now, what happens uh, uh, if we uh, compute, uh, for example, P1 times Y? Uh, now, then we have P1 equals U1 times U1 transpose, and here we have our Y. Uh, you can work out the product, so you get a, a C1 U1 and put the brackets a bit differently, U1 transpose U1 plus C2 U2 uh, times U1 transpose times U2. Now U1 and U2 are orthogonal, so this term cancels out, and U1 is normalized, so this term equals 1. So you're left with C1 U1. So what does P1 do? It projects onto U1. So what does P2 do? It projects onto U2. So this way of writing your projection matrix as P1 plus P2 up to Pn means that you write it as a sum of matrices that project on U1, on U2, on U3. So these P1, P2 and so on have a very clear interpretation as projection matrix on the single basis factors. And that's why it's a nice way to write P as a sum of those projection matrices on the separate factors. Now, the other way also has advantages, like the second way. For example, if you write P equals U times U transpose, then something nice happens if you compute P squared. So here we have one P, here we have another P. But uh, you're using an orthogonal matrix, so U transpose times U is the identity matrix over here. So P squared equals U I U transpose, so U times U transpose equals P. So P squared equals P. Well, that makes sense, of course, because if you uh, project twice, you do the same as when you project once. After the first projection, the second projection doesn't do anything anymore. So that makes sense to us. Then, if you take a look at the transpose, P transpose, so then we take U times U transpose, transpose. Uh, so uh, take transpose in invert order, so you get U transpose, transpose times U transpose equals U times U transpose equals P. So P transpose equals P or P is symmetric. Uh, so, that's, uh, so that holds for projection matrix, so nice of course. Uh, and even better, uh, so we have a theorem that tells us, uh, so, so if P squared equals P and P transpose equals P, then also we know that P is a projection matrix. It also holds vice versa. So seeing this direction, uh, well, we just saw it. If you have a projection matrix, then these two properties hold. And if these two properties hold, then P is a projection matrix. So those are in fact equivalent. So that's a nice advantage of writing your P in the second way.